Hi, this is Brock with Zeppelin Design Labs. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to put the percolator together. All right, when you get your box, it should in the mail, it should look something like this. And um, we're going to take all the pieces out of it and lay it across your workbench. Here, uh, you notice I am going to put all the pieces in different bins. Then the mechanical pieces go in one bin and the electrical pieces go in the other bin. The next thing we do is take out the standoffs and six lock washers and M3 screws and uh, assemble them just like in the manual where the screw goes through the circuit board and on the other side the lock washer gets installed along with the standoff. All right, the next thing is installing the resistors. And the resistors should all be bent, well almost all should be bent at 90 degrees. You know, the legs can be bent 90 degrees from the body. And as you see here, flip the board over and bend the legs out about 45 degrees just to keep it from falling out of the circuit board as you're building it. And later we're going to go through and solder all these components on, but for now we'll just place them. And there's a couple resistors on the board that do not have normal lead spacing as on the PCB. And so you just kind of have to uh, guess where the legs, how, how to bend the legs and place them in the holes accordingly. And that's all the resistors finished on the board. Now we're going to solder all the resistors. You just go through and solder each one of them and afterwards clip off the leads. And that's what the circuit board looks like with all the resistors installed. And just for safety before we go on, we're going to measure each one of these resistors with our ohm meter to make sure that they're all the right values. You know, keeping in mind that these resistors for the most part are, you know, within 5% of their given value. And next we'll install the tiny ceramic disc capacitors. These things are really small, but we're going to install them basically the same way we did the resistors. And there are two of those. And as you install them, um, go ahead and solder and clip the leads. Next is the film capacitors. There are three of these and they get installed the exact same way. Next are electrolytic capacitors. You have to be very careful with these ones because they are polarized, meaning it matters which leg goes into which hole. Whereas all the components so far, it hasn't mattered. But with these, it does matter. The standard that we are conforming to with on this product is that the long legs, which is the positive lead of the electrolytic capacitors, go in the square hole. It's very important to do that, you know, especially on these large capacitors here. And actually, if you install these things backwards, they're very likely to explode when you put high voltage across them. So make sure that they are installed properly. Yeah, your circuit board should look like this so far. And make sure that all the electrolytic capacitors are oriented properly. Next, uh, we're going to take one of the leads from the large electrolytic capacitors that we just installed and bend it just like a staple here. You can see me bending it with the pliers and install it into the jumper slot, which is right there on the board. It's labeled jump. And flip the board over and solder that in place. Next, we have the bridge diodes. These these bridges are also polarized. It's also quite important to make sure that these things are installed properly. The long leg of these components are positive, and so put those in the square hole. It's also labeled with a little plus to let you know that it's positive. So you can see that the plus on the component lines up with the plus on the circuit board. And you got to do that for both components, both bridge rectifiers. Well, 
once again solder and clip the leads of those. Next is the input jack. And uh, before we install this, go ahead and take the, the plastic nut off of that. We'll put it on later. And uh, it just should snap right into the circuit board pretty easily. And after that is snapped in, go ahead and solder that. The legs on this component are too short to cut, so don't even bother trying to cut them. Next is the potentiometer, or a pot. And once again, take the washer and nut off of this. And this one can be kind of tricky to, to solder in because it doesn't snap in all by itself. It doesn't kind of hold itself in like the other components have so far. So as you can see here, I'm just using the table top as a, as a base to kind of hold it on as I'm soldering it. But it is very important to make sure that the the, the pot is, fit, is fitting flush with the surface of the circuit board. Next, we're going to install the switch. If the leads um, on your switch are not perfectly straight, go ahead and use your needle nose pliers to kind of straighten them out very gently. You don't want to put too much torque on them though. And it should snap in there pretty nicely. And once it's snapped in, go ahead and solder that. You can start soldering. The front two legs are attached to the big piece of metal on the front of the switch, so it may need a little bit more heat to actually melt the solder efficiently. Next, we're going to solder the LED, which once again is polarized. And so it goes, the long leg goes into the square pad. And on this component, um, you don't install it all the way down on the board because we're going to bend it over and, and push the front of it out through the face of the chassis once it's all over. So we'll, we stand it off about oh, three quarters of an inch or so from the circuit board. And clip the leads once you have soldered those. Next is the feedback loop wire. Strip off about a quarter inch of each of the ends of this one. It is the ten and a half centimeter wire that came with your kit. And it goes right in the middle of the tube socket there, or the tube socket holes. And uh, coming out of the component side of the circuit board, you can solder that on and it's going to push it aside for later. Next is going to be a jumper wire that goes on the back side of the board, or the solder side of the board. It's a six centimeter wire. And it's got a line there on this, printed on the circuit board to kind of give reference of how it should be bent. So try to make it follow that line generally. And since it's installed onto the solder side of the board, you solder the thing on the component side of the board. Next is the heating filament wires, which is the twisted pair. It should be about 10 and a half centimeters long. And uh, untwist about a quarter inch of each side of this thing and uh, strip off about an eighth inch of each of the four wires. Use your pliers to straighten out the wires once you untwist them. And that goes in the holes labeled heaters on the solder side of the board. And it gets bent down into the two holes next to the tube socket holes. And um, just like this. And it kind of gets bent down to where it's kind of just off the circuit, circuit board there. And you solder that onto the component side of the board. All right, so the tube socket will need a little bit of help being prepared to be installed. The first thing I like to do is, is get my awl out and stretch out the, 
the socket holes a little bit to make the tube slide in later a little bit easier. And then um, place it on the circuit board. You might take some wrangling to get actually seated properly, but you can kind of bend the pins down as you see I'm doing here. And uh, that gets installed on the solder side of the board and it gets soldered on the component side of the board. So next, we're going to start working on the chassis. Uh, the first thing to do is install the grommets. There's four grommets, and they all fit on the top side of the chassis. And the holes indicated here. And then we're going to cut the transformer wires, starting with the power transformer. We're going to cut the black wires to length. And then we're going to cut the red and the brown wires to length. And then strip each of these wires and twist them and tin each one of them. And as a, as a chassis is facing you, um, the power transformer goes on the right side with the black wires going into the left hole and the red and brown wires going to the right hole. The transformer gets held down by an M3 screw with a Keps locking nut on the back side. And tighten those screws down tight to secure the transformer. And before we do anything else, let's twist the transformer wires. Keeping in mind not to twist them too tightly to possibly damage the transformer, just enough to keep them together to make them manageable. And next, for the output transformer, cut the wires. The wires should get cut to four inches a piece and stripped and tinned. And it should be installed just the way you see here. Once again, with the M3 screws on top and the Keps lock nuts on the bottom holding them tight. Once again we're going to twist these wires as well. Next are the fins. We're going to install the fins on top of the chassis with the screw holes on the inside, as you can see here, closest to the tube socket hole. Now do not over tighten these screws. It will strip out the chassis and that would be bad. Just tighten them enough to where they're secure and tight. Next, we're going to prepare the chassis for installing the faceplate sticker. Um, clean it off with some rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Um, and then, very carefully, line up the sticker with the holes on the front of the chassis and place it on there. Next is the LED socket. We're going to stick that through that hole. And now it's time to install the circuit board on the chassis. First we're going to bend down the transformer wires to get them out of the way. And then we're going to place the circuit board on the chassis and fit the components on the front of the circuit board through the holes on the front of the chassis. Just like this. Making sure that the transformer wires are in between the standoffs on the circuit board. Now once it's in, it's, it seems to be firmly in place, go ahead and lock it down with some screws through the top of the chassis. And 
And now we can go ahead and put the nut back onto the input jack and the washer and nut back on the pot. On the input jack, um, yeah, make sure you do not over tighten this, this nut because it, it does have a tendency to warp the, the faceplate label if you tighten it down too tightly. And next we're going to install the nut and the washer on the potentiometer. All right, next we're going to bend the LED down and place it into the LED socket. Just using your needle nose pliers, you kind of take some torquing and contortion to get it to fit right, but it should go. It should snap nicely into the back of the socket there. Just making sure that you don't end up twisting the LED and uh, shorting out the legs. And finally we're going to install the knob on the front of the chassis. And we're going to turn the, the pot all the way down, which is all the way counterclockwise, and place the knob so that it ends up lining up nicely with a full rotation. Next we're going to install the output transformer wires to the circuit board. The red wire goes in the square pad hole and the blue wire goes in the round pad hole of P1. And now for the power transformer wires, the black wires goes in P4, the red wires go in P2, it doesn't matter which wire goes in which hole as long as both red wires are in the holes of P2, and the brown wires go in P3. So next we're going to work on the IEC jack. We're going to take one of the four centimeter wires and strip off about a quarter inch of each end and bend a hook in one of the one of the uh, ends one of the stripped ends and crimp it onto the ground lug just like you see here and go ahead and solder that ground lug onto the wire And then we're going to take the other four centimeter wire and strip off about a quarter inch off of each side. And once again, bend a hook in this wire. And crimp that onto the ground lug of the IEC jack which is the one you see in the video here. Now make sure you're installing it onto the right lug. And now do the same thing with the, with the other four centimeter wire. Being a hook and crimping it onto the same lug. and then solder both those wires on there. So you have the one with the ground lug coming off the left and the one with nothing on it coming off the right. You can bend both these wires somewhat forward now because we're going to slide the IEC jack through the hole. And push it in until it pops in place. And to get it this seat really firmly, you can, you can go ahead and use your tiny screwdriver and bend up some of the tabs on the IEC jack to make it really snug. Next we're going to install the fuse in the IEC jack and that just snaps right into the back there and it gets slid, slid back in.
Next, we're going to install this ground lug to the chassis using an M4 screw and a caps locking nut. We're going to take some of the transformer wires that we cut earlier and cut those to about 10 centimeters and strip off about a quarter inch off of each of the ends and 10 both ends. And so the two wires that we have, we're going to install those on P5, the, the jet, the, uh, the port labeled IEC jack and solder both wires to those holes and then twist them together. And then they go over to the IEC jack and get soldered to the other two lugs that haven't been used yet. Make sure that you're soldering these things to the proper lugs on the IEC jack. That could be very dangerous otherwise. So yeah, you should pay close attention to the video here of which lugs I'm installing these things to. So next we're going to take the other ground wire and put it in one of the three square holes, which are ground holes, into the circuit board. And solder that in place from the component side. And next is the output jack. You can install that in the output jack hole and put the washer and nut on the outside of the chassis to hold it on. Tightening it up as firmly as we need to. And so then we're going to put the feedback loop wire, the long wire coming from the middle of the circuit board, to the positive lead or the positive lug of the output jack. If you don't know which one the positive lug is, just look at the video here. And then we're going to install or solder the green wire from the output transformer to the same lug. So the green wire goes to the, the positive tip lug and the white wire goes to the same lug. And the black wire gets soldered to the ground lug of this output jack. And look carefully at the orientation of this thing and how the wires are soldered. So you solder them to the right lugs. All right, so next is a tube. We're going to make sure that the tube has all the pins straight. And if it doesn't, um, use your needle nose pliers to very gently straighten each of the pins out. And then we'll install it into the tube socket. Very gently rock it into place, just like here. And the next step, we will be testing the amp to make sure that it's safe to operate using our digital multimeter. First thing to do is make sure that your amplifier has a load on it. Always have an 8 ohm load, plug it into a cabinet, that's 8 ohms, and uh, making sure that the power switch is off, plug the IEC jack into, or plug, plug the IEC outlet into the jack. And as it's plugged into the wall, we can measure the wall voltage at the other end of the IEC jack here. Being very careful not to short these pins out. That would be bad and melt your voltmeter probes. As you can see here, it's between 118 and 120 volts, which is ideal. So next, we will turn the amp on. The LED should come on right away. So take the black lead and put it on ground, any of, any of the ground points given by the instruction manual and the red lead will measure all of the, the voltages given by figure three in the instruction manual and make sure that they are reasonably close to the voltages given. When you're done checking all the voltages on the amplifier, turn the power switch off, unplug the IC jack, and unplug the, out, the output jack. And Finally, we're going to install the base of the chassis. It slides on just like this. And I'm going to use the 
screws to hold it together. Once again, do not over tighten these screws. And that's it for the electronics. Thank you.